Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. I know you don't see me get like upset very much on my channel and uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay, really I'm okay. I'm a little bit ticked off, but really I'm okay. But I wanna tell you a little bit about my experience with putting out my album, Looking for the Answers. And the reason I do so is because I know that a lot of you are also interested in making your own recordings. And it can be a really difficult thing, especially if you're not signed by a label, which I'm not. Now, mostly my album release has gone well, and I've been really happy about it. There are just a few things that I wish were different, however. But what I want to do today is tell you about my experience with iTunes in relation to putting out this album. I know that not many people buy music. That's just the way it is. They just kind of don't. Everybody wants music for free. Even I subscribe to Spotify. So, you know, for my nine bucks a month, I can listen to a whole lot of music. And I know that the artists are getting paid squat because I also am getting paid squat from my plays on Spotify. And I think we all just have to kind of be okay with that. That's the way it is. But there are a couple of charts that still exist. You know, we've got the Billboard charts and, and we've got the iTunes charts. And I try to do as much research as I could to figure out how I could get noticed by iTunes because I had this little goal. The goal was to be featured on the iTunes jazz page. I've got a lot of friends, you know, that are recording their own jazz albums and I've been paying attention because I haven't put out anything for a while. So I've got some friends, I won't say their names today because I, I just don't want to, you know, do that to people. But but I have friends who have been featured on the iTunes jazz page and I thought that was pretty cool because I figured it probably helped them to sell, you know, a few more digital albums for $9.99. And, you know, by the way, if you do sell on iTunes, not only might you get featured, but you also might get a spot on the iTunes charts. Now, Billboard uses, I think, they, they use the iTunes charts, they use um, all of the streaming services, numbers, and they use radio play to determine who gets a spot on their chart. So, so even though you might think that, you know, who, who really cares about iTunes because nobody buys music, it's kind of important, you know, not, not only for getting a spot on other charts, but also maybe for getting reviewed. Like if, you know, if Downbeat sees that you've held a spot on the iTunes chart for a while, maybe they're more likely to review you. You also might get noticed, uh, you know, when Grammy time comes up. There's all, all kinds of reasons to want to do well on iTunes other than just selling music. So I did a lot of research and everything that I could find told me that if I made my album available for pre-sale a few weeks before the release date and racked up enough pre-sales that iTunes would notice and that's how I might get featured on my release date. Because as far as I can figure out, iTunes works it like this. They take the sales from any given day and redo their charts. So by the time the pre-sales have happened, and, and I, I released mine on March 15th for pre-sale, and then the album actually dropped on April 15th. So that's a full month. I thought that's a good you know time that I can use to advertise and use my YouTube channel to get people stoked about the album and, and to pre-order it. So... I didn't know how that would work, but that was my goal. By the time that month was over, that there would be enough pre-sales so that the day the album dropped, all those pre-sales add together and it's kind of like everybody bought your album that day because they don't really count on iTunes until your album drops. So a really cool thing happened. I didn't expect, I was actually lying in bed around midnight the you know the night of the when it became April 15th and I just decided to open up my iTunes to just see if my album was even available yet like if it was actually going to drop at midnight and when I got to the page I was number one on the charts and I kind of I kind of flipped out for a second and I, oh, I flipped out for a while it, it was cool like that was great I did not expect to be number one on the charts it took it took a little while it took a little while for me to kind of realize what that means. And I mean, it's still cool, but iTunes did not feature me. They never did feature me. So I was number one for like a full, I don't know, maybe 48 hours. And then I started to drop 
number two for a day, number 10 for a day. And, and I don't know, I forget, maybe it was two weeks or something until I was completely off the charts. So I decided to go look at the numbers when they were available to me. I put my album out with a digital distributor called CD Baby. That's the one that I've used in the past. So that's the one I used this time. And I, I know there are other ones out there. Distro Kid has written to me. And I know like Andrew Wong is putting his music out through Distro Kid. And, and you know, maybe I'll try somebody else besides CD Baby in the future because maybe it's the fault of them, but I don't really know. And I'm also like, I don't pretend to know everything. I really, really, really don't. So if you know things about this, I would love for you to write them in the comments and teach me because all the research I've done shows that if you get enough pre-sales, iTunes will feature you. Like you, you work your tail off and bam, you get the reward. Well, I got the reward of being number one, but that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to feature me. You know who I was number one over? Miles Davis, kind of blue. Now that's weird, isn't it? So that's something to think about. I'm tabling that for a second. They didn't feature me. I was number one and they did not feature me. So to me, that was time and effort wasted in a way. So I don't really know what to make of that. You know, I did work my tail off. You guys were awesome. And some of you bought my album ahead of time and helped me to be number one. So that was really, really cool. Yeah, but they didn't feature me. So what I did was I started noticing when friends of mine were featured and it happens quite often because the jazz community is small. So sometimes friends of mine do get featured on the iTunes jazz page. I wrote to them and I said, Hey, congrats on being featured on the iTunes jazz page. Could you tell me how you did that? If you know, and one of my friends said, I really don't know. You'd have to talk to my label. So I couldn't really do that, but she had no idea. Another one of my friends said, I've got no idea at all. It wasn't me. It wasn't the label. I didn't have my album available for pre-sales. It was just there. Now that friend did say that they were named jazz album of the month by a radio station in New York. And that radio station happened to buy 80 copies of the digital copies and send them out to, I don't know, like VIP listeners or something that month. So in one day, 80 copies were sold. iTunes may have noticed that and decided to feature my friend. I'm going to tell you how many copies, digital like downloads of my whole album there were in that month, because I think it's important that you know. So keep in mind, I was number one that day, right? It was 124. In that whole month, 124 people downloaded my album. And that was enough. It, with all the sales accrued, you know, but just counting for one day, that was enough to put me at number one. Now the second day, or the third day, I can't remember, when I dropped to number two, five people on that day bought the album. That was enough for number two. So that means on any given day, five people in the world are buying the digital download of kind of blue. All I needed was six to beat it out and be in the number one spot that day. Right now, Brad Meldow's on the charts and he's been on for a while and he should be on like Brad Meldow should have that number one spot, you know, a long time after he releases a new album. But I think he's number three today. And from my experience, that shows me that maybe five people bought his album today. So that's kind of crazy, isn't it? And it was kind of eye-opening for me to realize that it only takes five or six sales in one day on the jazz charts to, you know, beat out Miles Davis and get the number one spot. It, it's probably a little bit different in the rock world, pop world, but probably not much actually, because you go look at the charts and you'll see, you know, really old albums that are still on the charts because they're great and people buy them. And I, I went to some of my friends, you know, at some of my gigs and stuff. And I, I told them about this and, you know, they asked me, they said, well, how many sales did you make, you know, in your pre-sales? I was like 124 and they went, that's actually pretty good. So they were like impressed at that. And, and I'll tell you too, like, since my album has come out, I probably get 
like $60 a month from CD Baby for all of my digital sales. A little bit more from, you know, my actual CDs that people get, but the digital sales since my album came out, about 50 or $60 a month. But my friends who just play in LA and they're, you know, big names here, they're not making that much from, from their digital distributor. They're not. The only way that they're making money is by going on tour, selling their merchandise, selling their CDs, and having packed shows. It's really the only way people are making money these days. And I know that, like I already knew that. I didn't set out to make this album to make money. That I, I just had songs and I needed people to hear them and I needed to make a finished product and I'm proud of it. And so I'm really glad that I did that and I'd do it again. And I don't know that I'd do anything differently because I don't, I don't really think I can. I think I worked my tail off and I even hired a promoter. So I've, I've been able to get a lot of reviews, but um, man, I don't know how people get featured on iTunes. I think that there's some way that the labels can pay iTunes. And I don't know what that way is because I have to Google searched and searched and searched and tried to find out how can I pay iTunes to feature me? And there's nothing. Every single site that I read tells me the exact same thing, which is push the pre-sales. Get as many pre-sales as you can. iTunes will notice and they will feature you. Well, I'm here to tell you, they will not. Even if you get to the number one spot, that's not what it is. I don't know what it is. If you know, tell me. I've got nearly 5,000 Facebook friends and I asked a question a couple of days ago. If you've ever had an album that was featured on iTunes, how did you get it featured? It was crickets. Always when I ask a question on Facebook, I get a bunch of people commenting on things and you know, giving me their advice or their experience. Crickets, nobody knows. Even my friends who have had albums featured had zero idea how their album got featured. And to me, that's bad. It's sad. I don't know. It's okay. Like, like I said, I'm fine, but that kind of stinks, right? Like I had a little goal and I, I didn't quite achieve it and whatever, but I just feel like they lied to me or that there's not the right information out there. I, I've got a, I've got a good friend too, who has an album that dropped recently and it's featured. It's also mastered for iTunes. So it's really featured on that page. You know, it's right up at the top and, and my, I won't tell you my friend, but it's, it's a big name, like a name that everybody knows in jazz. And that album has not been on the charts, maybe the first day, but I couldn't find it. If it was there, I didn't see it. And it's not there today. And it, it's only been a couple of days since it dropped totally featured, not on the charts. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't have animosity toward any of my friends who get featured. I hope I don't seem like that. I I'm stoked for anybody who gets any attention in any way that they get it. If you know how this stuff is going down, I would love it for you to tell me because nobody I talk to knows. And I talk to a lot of people. If there's interest, I might make another video about what it's like to, you know, be an indie artist or have your own label, which, which I do, which doesn't really mean anything. Um, you know, just putting out something on your own. I can, I can talk more about, about all the ways that I tried to be successful doing that. Um, if there's interest, there might not be interest. I mostly just wanted you to know that you can work your tail off for the iTunes feature and you're probably not going to get it. All right. Comment for me. Let me know what you think. I'm really interested. Thanks for watching everybody. Well, for Pete's sake, pick up the album. If you don't pick it up, just listen to it on Spotify and contribute to my 50 or 60 bucks a month. That would be awesome. Thanks everybody. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.